So this is the point where systematic reviews uh, can get messy and where a program like this can be really helpful because I found a bunch of duplicates that were not caught when the program searched for duplicates. A couple reasons that might have happened are that the capitalization in the titles is different. Sometimes there's a typo in one database and not another, and so it assumes that they're different. The other is that the journal titles themselves are spelled out differently in different databases. So if it didn't pick up the journal title or something about the title of the article itself, then it would not have assumed that uh, they were the same. So in scrolling through, what I want to make sure is that I've got this little table over here. I want to come back to what I know so far in, scroll in, in working through this. One is that I had 784 total articles, total citations, I probably should call this. And out of the 784, seven of them were definitely not in the English language. So if I have 784 minus 7, that's going to give me a number here. Let me hold off on this for just a second. I eliminated duplicates. When I found the extra duplicates, I had to add that to the number that I had here. So I have 784 minus 7 minus 402. So I'm going to disappear this for a moment. And then I found the poster presentations and some things that were definitely not peer-reviewed research. I have found four of those so far. I may find more. So again, I can disappear this for the moment. Everything that I found that had the word protocol in the title, I found 37. So I went ahead and moved those over into the trash. And by the way, don't empty your trash. Just move things into the trash and leave that little waste basket full. So at this point, I have 321 references. So what I can do with my 321 references is continue to search the titles of the articles for studies that definitely don't meet my criteria. And so just looking on the screen here, you can see there's something here specific to asthma. I'm not studying asthma, but blood pressure probably showed up as a measurement somewhere in this study. So as I find those, I can search for what they're about, and we, we take it at face value that um, the acceptability and feasibility of the DASH for asthma intervention is something that's not going to be specific to my patient population. Other things that I can search here are pediatric or child. So if I search in my title and um, and I use, uh, let's say, pediatric or child or adolescent. Let's search in the title again, adolescent or in the title, pediatric. If I get rid of all of these, let's just see what happens if anything turns up. No matching references found. So nothing like that's going to show up in my title, and that's probably pretty good news. Um, and then my other search criteria will be geographic location. So if I wanted to search for um, studies that were here in the U.S., I can search in any of these fields. I, you know, if I wanted to look at Western countries as well, any of these areas are searchable, but you do want to make sure when you click into your citations that uh, the information is included in that field. So if the field's blank, it's not going to return anything. So the goal here is to get these 320 down, 21 references down to abstracts that one will manually screen. And at that point, manually screening um, 300 citations should not take you more than a couple hours. And as you're finding things that don't meet your criteria, you can put them in the discard pile, but you do want to come on over to your table and say, what am I getting rid of? So I didn't find any searches of pediatrics, but I'm guessing I'm probably going to find that. So I'll get pediatric or child studies, uh, geographic focus is going to be an additional criteria, and then um, other conditions not hypertension or blood pressure. So as I find these, I'll document, I'm getting rid of this, I'm getting rid of that, I'm getting rid of that, I'm getting rid of that. And as you disappear these, the total number of articles, so if I take my total citations and I say I've got 784, if I come in over here and say this is where I'm starting, all of this will get subtracted as you go along and you'll be able to explain exactly what you got rid of and why. And ultimately then, you'll be able to start to look at the trials themselves to figure out if they meet the inclusion criteria. And in your inclusion criteria in a study like this 
will change as you go along. So health coaching, health coaching, and motivational interviewing, there may be um, a, a specific focus that can come out of this. Let's say if I still find 78 studies, I may end up only looking at studies involving women or only studies that involve men or only studies that involve specific groups. So all of that is yet to be determined. The only thing that I do know is that searching these databases with these search terms and making some general exclusion criteria have now led me to 321 references that I have to play with. And as I work my way through these references and discard, 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 remember I'm in a different library. So once I've gone through my systematic search, it will all end up being documented here and in my Word document so that it will be really clear to reviewers and whoever else reads my article what got excluded so that I can then cross-reference, so pop back over here, the list of references that ultimately meet my inclusion criteria. So I can actually, I can even make a subgroup that says, you know, this is a keeper, and the studies that meet my inclusion criteria, I then probably can pop back on over into my health coaching hypertension library and figure out if I've already got full text. So we haven't limited anything to full text yet. We don't really need to get full text until we actually find studies that meet the inclusion criteria.